Hello, everyone, and welcome to Swim with Jim. This is Jim Ludwig, Main Street Financial Planning. And today we have with us Liz Weston of NerdWallet, an author and financial writer for over two decades. And Liz is someone we've been reading since... Uh, we were an LA Times subscriber way back when, and we thought we would ask Liz today some questions about planning for the holidays, financial planning for the holidays. Liz, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jim. We're glad to have you here. And you know, the holidays are just around the corner now that the election is about over. Oh, so we'd like to talk about the holidays and planning ahead from a personal finance perspective. So what kind of decisions will consumers be making this holiday season that's maybe different from past holidays? Well, Jim, we realized or we found out from the U.S. Census Bureau that we actually had an uptick in income last year, and it was fairly sizable. It was 5%. And this is big news because, you know, we've been looking at either declining or stagnating income for a long, long time. We're still not back up to the median incomes of 1999, for example. But the fact that more people are making more money, that's a good thing. And I think we're going to see that continue through 2016. So the bottom line is I think people will have more money to spend. And I think they might be a little bit more comfortable, we'll see, you know, about spending that cash. So I think one of the things people need to keep in mind is even if you feel a little more flush, uh, you still got to be careful about how you're spending your money, how you're deploying it, because I don't know your experience, Jim, but whenever I get a windfall, I feel like I'm rich, you know, and I'll spend it three times over if I'm not careful. So just doing a little planning up front really can help you make the most of your money and not end the holidays feeling like you've overdone it and you're going to have to pay the bill for the next six months. Well, are there any new tools or techniques? I know you working at Nerd Wallet, you have a lot of millennials there that are very tech savvy and more and more of us, even of us older folks, are starting to use the internet more and more. What tools or techniques are available to help consumers this holiday season? Well, let me start with the tried and true, which is not new at all, but it's a spreadsheet. And it's something that I do every holiday. I've, I've got a template. I'm going to put it up on my site in a couple days. And people can use it to sort of plan out all the different parts of the holidays, because I think that's really important. You need to look at who you're buying gifts for. You need to set a budget for those folks. You need to look at travel costs food costs, entertaining, decorating, all that stuff. You know, the trees out here in California are expensive, so we have to budget for them. Uh, back when I lived in the Northwest, we just went out into the field and chopped something down, so that was a big change. So putting all that stuff on a spreadsheet sounds a little nerdy, but once you add that all up, you can see, okay, this is, you know, a big chunk of change. Maybe I need to adjust here or there. Maybe I need to, you know, work on that, getting that gift list down or doing some sort of a round, round robin thing with gifts, you know, so that we're not, everybody's not buying everybody presents. So, you know, those things you need to figure out. But once that's down, once you've done the old school spreadsheet, then there are some great options out there. Um, I'm researching right now crowdfunded gifts. And this is, I'm not a big fan of gift cards. I don't think they're really gifts. Um, but I like the idea of people getting together and getting one person something they really want, either, you know, something they can purchase a thing or an experience. And there are a ton of sites out there. There's um, Plum Fund is one of them that I was looking at. Share a Gift is another. If you start looking, you'll just see a ton of these sites. So if you and your siblings, for example, want to get together and get grandma something, you know, she doesn't need any more stuff. Maybe an experience, maybe dinner out, something like that. You can do it through the, these sites, which is pretty cool. And something else that one of my uh, millennial coworkers reminded me of is you can buy stuff on Pinterest now. So if you're out there looking for gift ideas and you see something cool on Pinterest, you can just, you know, click on it and make the purchase. So that makes things easier. And another uh, really helpful, for me anyway, uh, tool, again, not new at all, but it's Amazon wish lists. Those are really helpful, particularly when you're dealing with teenagers. So, you know, teenagers are the one category of, of person, I basically say, okay, you can buy a gift card for a teenager. I get it. <laughs> They're so hard to buy for. But wish lists are always really helpful as well. 
And uh, I'll tell you what, for our viewers, we're going to put down the link to your website and uh, spreadsheet and also some of the sites that you've just mentioned. So uh, if you're watching this later on, please look for those links in the comment section. So uh, after we made all these great purchases, Liz, what's happening in the background? Because many of us put those purchases on credit cards. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only way you can really buy from uh, Amazon. I guess I could take PayPal's the another way, but or a debit card. But most of us put things on credit cards. And uh, what's going to be happening to our credit score during the holidays, and, and how do we manage that? Jim, I'm really glad you brought that up because it's important to keep track of how much of your available credit you're using on a credit card. Now, I'm a huge fan of using credit cards because they give you that layer of protection that you don't have with a debit card. Instead of the money coming directly out of your checking account, there's a middleman there. If you have a problem, uh, if there's any fraud, that middleman can protect you much better than when you're using a debit card. So, you know, I, I like using credit cards. I do not like credit card debt. I don't think you should be charging anything on those cards that you can't pay in full when the bill is due. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But as far as your credit score, when you start using more of your credit limit, that puts pressure on your score. And if you use 30% or less, that's good. If you use 10% or less, that's best. So it's kind of a, a sliding scale with your FICO score. The less of your available credit you're using, the better. A lot of people actually don't know what their available credit is unless they're right up against it, and then they get you know very aware. But so maybe go look at your credit cards that you're planning to use and see what the credit limits are and then figure out what 10% of that limit is and try to stay there. If you have to go above, you know, that's okay. But you don't want to be 50%, 60%, 70% because you will really see the damage in your credit score. People don't understand this because they think, well, I pay my balance in full. It doesn't matter. But the reality is what's being reported to the credit bureaus and what's being used to calculate your scores is the amount of credit you happen to be using on the day that the credit card company decided to report. And often that's your statement balance. So that's why I say don't, at any point of the month, try not to go above 10% if you can, but definitely don't go above 30%. Wow, great ideas. Hey, what other suggestions or tips do you have for our viewers and listeners, because this is, turns into a podcast too, during this holiday season? I think one of the things to keep in mind is we there have been so much research on what actually makes us happy, and it's very clear that it's not stuff, it's experiences. So in in the you know short term, try to be thinking about, you know, like when you're going through your gift list, try to think about experiences you can give rather than things, because I think, you know, ultimately those are much more fun. Things you can do together, you know, as a family or with your friends, even better. And then in terms of the holidays themselves, to try to enjoy it. You know, there's, there's a lot of tension of, with all the spending, with all the shopping, with all the running around, you know, travel, entertaining. It's easy to get caught up in, in what's wrong or what problem you have to fix. And Tony Robbins said something wonderful about how our brains are set up to look for problems and then try to solve them. But that kind of keeps us in a state of anxiety and worry all the time. And sometimes we just need to remind ourselves what we're grateful for, what we have going for us, and try to just enjoy the moment, take a deep breath. So that's what I would say to anybody who's you know, putting together a plan for the holidays or thinking about holiday spending is to remember to enjoy it. You know, It only comes but once a year. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here, and we hope to see you back more than once a year. Uh, we've been talking today with Liz Weston from nerdwallet.com. And also, she's syndicated in other publications around the country and the author of several personal finance books. Uh, we'll, her information that you can follow her on Twitter and uh, Facebook and other places uh, will be in the comments section. So, Liz, thank you very much. We really appreciate you being here today. Thanks, Jim. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs>